So welcome, Donna. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me. So Donna Thank is you. yeah, Donna is here with me. Donna joined the coaching program probably a couple of months ago now, about two months. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I I think it was like um, I, I looked at September 9th, so like not even two months. Okay, and today is Halloween, October 31st, and only in Chicago is it snowing on Halloween, which my kids were really excited for, uh, and I just found terribly inconvenient, but, uh, but nevertheless, about, about two months. Maybe if you, if you could explain your, your journey a little bit and, and what you've done in, in the past um, and just your experience in trading, sure. and, you know, just a little bit of background. Okay, sure. Um, well, for uh, many years, I've just been a stock investor. Mm-hmm. And uh, long, you know, buy and hold pretty much, and really didn't even know what I was doing with that, but it all worked out great because you know we were in this incredible bull market. So, <laughs> you know, and then I guess about two or three years ago, I wanted to start actively um, paying attention to it and learning how to trade, um, managing it more because you know the bull market had gone on for so long, and I just didn't see it continuing and. Sure wanted to, uh, to manage the risk and just started uh, exploring what was out there. And I just really just got so fascinated with trading and just love it and decided that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm really, really passionate about it. So just started learning a lot of stuff and um, at first had a lot of success because it was 2017 and everything went straight up and I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> right. And in 2018, I found out I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> I right. mean, the volatility hit and it scared me to death. And okay. really just over the last couple of years, I've been learning a lot about a lot of different things, but really getting nowhere. Um, uh, getting chopped up in the market and just, trying to figure things out on my own, basically. And were you still, were you focusing more on stocks or stocks and options at the time? Um, Well, I I got into options in 2017 and that's where I was doing pretty well when the market was easy. Um, But I I was not managing my risk well. When I look back on some of the things I did that worked out okay because of the market and I look at now what I know and I think, oh, that was, you know, just so not smart. Right. Um, what's an What's an example of something like that that you look back on? Uh, and you would just do completely like, differently. Like doing credit spreads, um, because I I didn't feel real confident with the call options and everything was going up. So I would do credit spreads for way too much risk and still make money because the market was so bullish. Right. Um, and then there was a few times where the volatility hit and, you know, it, it's scary when you have So doing put credit spreads and the market was yeah. going higher. And yeah. right. So that's something that a lot of people do get caught in because, you know, mm-hmm. credit spreads, you're going to make money more often than not. But as we talk about, you're risking five dollars to make a dollar, and it works. Right. In, it works until it doesn't, and there's definitely right. a, a false sense of security. Um, exactly. I, I learned that the hard way, and I, I pretty much am not interested in credit spreads anymore. I mean, I, that's just not what I want to do. So. And when um, you say when you say the hard way, I'm I'm guessing the the market had to teach you that lesson. Yes. And that's the tough. <laughs> It's a tough part about trading too, because something that we say from the professional side is the, the market is not always right, where you can put on a bad position and sometimes it works out, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right position over a long term. This time it may, the ball may have bounced your way, but longer term, that might not be the most viable strategy. That's correct. And totally believe that. And unfortunately, we all are a bit stubborn by just by human nature. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing that for somebody to tell you or to teach you, but you really start learning it when the market takes your money. Yeah. So, so, so after that, I um, 
kind of got scared away from options in general and went back to the stock trading. And, you know, it, it was just hard because once the volatility hit and I got a little scared, then when the market was really good, I was a little bit too nervous to get back in. Okay. And, you know, have, have definitely been trading a lot smaller and managing my risk more. But, um, you know, it, it's just, it's been tricky the last few years. So I, I was really, really pleased when I found you because <laughs> it's really turned things around for me. And so just to, to kind of summarize a little bit, so definitely more longer term investing. When the market was going up, you were making money, you were getting confident. And then all of a sudden, when the market starts dipping down a little bit, the VIX goes higher because you're long stock, because you're in credit spreads. Then you realize that, oh, geez, there's another side to this game. If the market doesn't always go up, what do we do when the market goes down? How can we protect our portfolio? Maybe even make a little bit of money. So is that fair that mm -hmm. everything was okay when things start moving forward, going higher, but as soon as there's a little bit of volatility, that's when the uncertainty and, and being uncomfortable comes about. That, that, that's correct. And, and the, the credit spread issue, I, I stopped that really quick. So that wasn't, you know, a long-term thing, but mm -hmm. then I was, you know, just trying to find, well, what do I, what do I want to do now? How should I be trading now? And just spent a lot of time exploring a lot of different avenues. Um, so I have a, a little bit of knowledge about a lot of different things, but don't, um, <laughs> didn't really know how to do it properly. And, uh, you know, some of the things that I've learned coming into the coaching program has put so many of the pieces together. It, it's okay. just unbelievable. Um, because I had a basic understanding of options, but sure. I just didn't know how to trade them properly. And so now I'm excited about options again, where I was really kind of scared off before. Um, Can you give an example of something that may have kind of, you thought might have made sense before joining, but then after seeing how we trade and how we manage right. our positions, kind of yes. what, what's sure. been the big difference for you? Sure. Well, um, it, it's the trade management. And I mean, one of the, the big differences that I had not heard anywhere else that my other education I had gotten was pretty much when you do a spread, you put it all on at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the spread, you limit your upside, but you're, you're minimizing your risk. It gives you more time to make, be in the trade. But um, <laughs> that just wasn't working for me. And right. what, what I've learned here. Oh, and, and let me add one more thing. The other thing, too, was that, um, you know, only buy in the money options. You know, there's people out there that have, like, uh, you know, Delta 70, Delta 90. Um, there's what? a lot of... It, what's, what's the I, reasoning? I, th I think the reasoning was because it won't... It, you, you have more intrinsic value, and it's more likely to, mm -hmm. um, to not expire worthless. But... What, what I see is that I was, it costs so much more to put on the trays for one. Right. And um, I, I mean, I probably am not going to be able to articulate everything where it makes complete sense, but um, I just have really enjoyed the way that you're teaching it. it. I can put on the trade for so much less risk and then I can manage it by you know, selling upside calls and et cetera, and putting, right. building into the, legging into the spread, um, where that's something that was not taught. And in fact, I had heard other educators saying that that's not a good idea. <laughs> well, so well, it, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and, and I just love the way you teach and it's just really working and it makes complete sense to me now. No, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm, First of all, whenever, even in this conversation, I, I, I want to understand like when they say buy in the money options with a delta of 70 or a delta of 90, I'm always asking like, like why? Like why does that make sense? And I just, I just don't understand. I just literally don't understand. You could buy something with a delta of one. It's called just buying stock. So, right. I mean, literally – for everybody, I don't think anybody really should be buying in the money options. You should be trading right. extrinsic, not intrinsic. 
And anybody watching who might have come across the same education or, you know, even for you a couple of years back, looking at a 90 delta option, you're better off just instead of buying the 90 delta option, going on the put side. And if the, if the calls are a 90 delta, the puts are a 10 delta. They, it all equals one. So the at the money delta is always 50 for the puts. It's always 50 for the calls, give or take a little, a little bit. But instead of buying a 90 delta in the money call, you could buy a 10 delta out of the money put and buy stock. And you're doing the exact same trade for you know 90% off. It's literally identical risk. But unfortunately, most people who are teaching options, they, they're, not, they're not aware of that. And too often they're putting people in positions that are, are really uncomfortable for the risk reward. Mm -hmm. you know, and, we, mm -hmm. and we see that with a lot with the credit spreads, doing credit spreads when the VIX is at 12 or 13. Great, that works until it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, I mean, it's really dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, I, I just learned that I didn't really know enough about options to trade them properly because I wasn't having, you know, good success. And that's why I just kind of veered away from it and went back to stocks and then was trying to dabble in some futures and, you know, learn other things there. But um, I, I'm, I'm happy to be back in option land and cool. having good success and uh, I mean, the other thing is just the, the trade management um, knowledge that I've gained has been unbelievable. Um, I, I did not know how to manage a trade before. And it, uh, it, it, it gives it you lets confidence. You, it helps you feel in control. It really does. It helps you feel in control. And we always say, you know, mm -hmm. having options gives you options. And if you're going to be managing your family's money without knowing the rules of the game, uh, you're going to lose money. It's, it's you know, it's mm -hmm. something that you look back and you, like you said, you realize how unprepared you were in, in the past. It's just too expensive of a game not, right. to, not to be educated. Um, Absolutely. So can we, uh, if, if you don't mind, since joining in it's September, how has the you know, performance been? Uh, how long did it take before you were comfortable trading? I know in the beginning we talked about taking a little bit time and paper trade, but I know you like to put on risk and get in there just on the same <laughs> way. I'm, I'm a gambler at heart, but... Yeah, Have you been able I, to slowly work into it or do you find yourself getting too aggressive too early? Um, I, I've been pleased with the way that I've been, um, with the amount I've been risking. I, I've, I did jump into it because before I had joined the coaching program, I had joined the Portfolio Masters Club like okay, the week the before. Sure. Yeah, the membership. And um had put on trades and it was an unbelievable week. So I just, you know, joined at the right time and, and made some good money right up front. So since I was already ahead, I just kind of didn't look back on the, the paper trading. Was it, just, was it, was it enough to cover the coaching program in the first week? It, it was almost enough for, for both <laughs> the, uh, well, that's, the, that's for awesome. Both coaching programs. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, then it's good and then you can settle down and just focus on on the education and getting more comfortable what about yeah. so we, we do a lot of besides just the options trading we do a lot of these specialized kind of trades whether it's hedge fund secrets which is a trade that i love in the fourth quarter um our earnings trades our lockup trades have any of those been been some of your favorite or, or, or what trades do you find yourself gravitating to more than the others um, well, I have one lockup trade on right now that the lockup expiration hasn't even hit. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that one's going okay so far, but, um, that's, a, well, oh, that's fast a fast lead. Lead. Yep. Yeah. So, um, oh, and then uh, and a, a note on that one, um, I, it's a very small position, but some of my profits in that has been from Scalp and Gamma. So oh, cool. I've done that twice on that trade and I, I love yeah, I just love that concept. I mean, that's something I was not familiar with, and it's it's unbelievable. So, um, so, so for Fastly, your long puts are you long the the twenty two halves? I think so. Yeah, the twenty two so half. Long twenty two half puts and and scalping gamma is when the stock gets in the money, 
you can buy stock. If the stock mm -hmm. rallies, you can sell stock. And by doing that, you're able to, we call it, take chips off the table or, or lock in money while you're continuing to hold the core position. So it's just a way of mm -hmm. managing the trade. And you know, the reason people scalp gamma is to make up for theta. So the direct opposite, people understand theta, but they don't understand gamma. The easiest way to understand it is they are polar opposites. They're black and white. So when you're along an option, you theta decays. And this, the reason we scalp gamma is to capture that theta that's decaying. So that's like the reason behind trading like that. And why, I mean, it, it does make sense. And that was, that was something, your dog saying hi in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. when I started this company in 2015, I couldn't believe that was the one thing that people had no idea that you could manage your options using stock. And it's, mm -hmm. to me, it's options one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm glad you're recognizing that, getting, getting the hang yeah. of that. And it's a great way just, you know, to not touch your options, to, to leave that optionality, mm -hmm. to take advantage of that leverage and to slowly take money off the table by just playing around with the stock. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, and um, the other thing that I'm excited about is I, um, a lot of the trading I do is in my IRA. Mm -hmm. And so short positions now are very exciting to me because then on the scalping gamma side, I can buy shares where sure. on the, the bull side, I can't sure. short shares to scalp sure. gamma. So um, I'm looking forward to bearish trades where I can do that in my yeah. IRA. Where you can buy puts. Coincidentally, yeah. I guess, and most of the trades that we're in from the long side we're in because of short squeezes and they become these hard to locate type stocks. So it's even very difficult to sell them anyway. So trading in, a, in an IRA, it's good for the, the put side, but even the positions that were long calls, it's tough to sell stock in those positions anyway, because a lot of them are just hard to borrow. So true, true. You, you can get off trading in your IRA just fine. And also we're buying options. so. It's a lot easier. It's not like you can do the credit spreads in your IRA as easily. Buying options is pretty straightforward. So I, I, I just have been really pleased with all the trade management knowledge that I've learned. It, it, it's just, um, I find that, you know, like you say, you don't want to turn your account and over trade. So now, you know, I'm not trading too much and I spend most of my time figuring out the best way to manage the trade. And, that takes some of the focus away from trying to find new trades. Yeah. And it's just being creative with what you have out there and trying to be most efficient and maximize what you have. And um, I, I find that um, a lot of fun is just looking for ways to manage the trade. It's just smarter too. It's a lot more relaxing. Mm -hmm. and, and you play a, a ton exactly. of tennis. So you're, I like to run a lot. You're away from the market and, as long as, as long as your portfolio is balanced, we're just looking more at the bigger picture. I always think it's a red flag when anybody is sitting up close to their computer, staring at the charts and waiting for the next trade like that. It's just, it's tiring. It's not scalable. It's, I just don't think that it's, it's a practical approach for the long term. Mm -hmm. So where we do need to get to is build your portfolio, find trades that you like, make sure it's balanced. And then once you do that, Go play tennis, go run, take a step away from the computer, you know, go, go, go read and go research. So that's mm -hmm. where I think that we can capture a little bit of edge. I think it's like death by a thousand cuts when people are constantly managing their position and constantly feel like they have to trade or they have to create a trade Bye. because there's nothing going on. So we used to exactly always tell the guys at, at the firm that just because your business card says that you're a trader, it doesn't mean you have to sit there and trade all day. You know, mm -hmm. Build spreadsheets, make tools, play around with your charts, find different different trades and different reasons uh, for being in mm -hmm. trades. But take a step back and stay away from the market. It's like a drug. Mm -hmm. So agreed. Well, Donna, I am I am thrilled for you. I really am. A, I've loved working with you these two months. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. We'll uh, stay on right now. We'll transition over to more of a 
coaching call and, and go over exactly what you're doing. But again, I'm, I'm excited for you and, and just want to say I, I love working with you and thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Well, I, I'm, I just feel so um, grateful to, to be part of the program. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, and the Facebook group is amazing too. The, the community and um, everyone's so helpful and Steven's amazing helping people out, answering questions. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just so very great, very grateful. Thank you.